Welcome to Scooby Reality Team, sponsored by Clubs Cover Parts. We just got the floorboards in last night. And I'm on to the next thing, trying to get this thing ready. And it looks like our 14 inch tire and wheel are not going to fit in the stock spare tire holder. So I'm going to have to put on a 13 inch tire. We're going to go in here, I got to get this thing buttoned up. So we're going to be painting underneath the blower housing and subframe area. Then I'm going to stab some fuel tank stuff in here. We're going to run some lines. Um, everything that I can get done to get this thing ready to put the engine in, it's going to happen in this video. Stay tuned. It's the middle of July right now and press on regardless that we're taking the car to is September 6th and 7th. So we're going to skip all the other painting on the underbody and the interior, whatever I need to do. We're going to get this thing going. So let's move on to the fuel and brake lines here. Then I'll reference my assembly manual, the illustration for brakes, and I'm going to follow these instructions to figure out uh, which parts go where and, uh, and what clips they go into. Should work. That should come through the short pan somewhere over there. And I think we have two hooks up here, two clips up here that I have to find. Found these little guys. Some little shrink tubing. And that should give us enough protection for the uh, pipes going through here. I think the next step is to go up to the brake lines, which go up on the top of these. So that goes in there. It came like this, didn't it? Doesn't fit. Ah! All right, Dad is in here. We are putting together the rear engine mount, and we put anises on both bolts. A uh, strip of RTV around the edge, so it hopefully it seals and doesn't fill up with water again. There's a little figure eight thing inside, and that plate, and it should all assemble. On the previous episode, we were drilling this um, cross duct apart. There's two brackets here that go on these two nuts, and then those two holes go into the body. Got these pulled out, got them all ground off, 415, um, and then this is the heater box. Um, we have two dampers in here. Yeah, the bottom you can see is really pitted rusty. The top was really, really good, so. So we did have some pinholes along here, so I just put some fiberglass to seal that up. We need to fit this in here. Then we'll put seam seal around here and rivet it back together. All right, so headliner spray, then the batting, then we're gonna put this together with the seam sealer, rivet it, and then we attach it to this one. We both ordered the Clark's Ultimate Heater Kit. I'm thinking we misplaced something because um, we went through everything. We lost a couple pieces, so we're gonna try to find um, a used one to put on. I think the left one's better than the right one. So let's take the right one off. You ready for this one? Or? That's close enough. Stay on target. Stay on target. It's 6.15 at night on Saturday. My dad leaves tomorrow morning Sunday for his week-long Boy Scout trip up north with the, the troop. And this was my day to have him help me put the engine in. And we've since spent three hours fucking around with the heater box. It's coming down to the point that I had to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him and say, it's either the heater box or it's the engine. And I can live without defrost. I cannot live without an engine. I'm super annoyed, I'm super tired, and I don't want to be here. We're going to slide the engine up underneath it. Uh, theoretically, putting the engine in and the transmission and the axle tonight should be a total of seven bolts to install. But if it all goes well, we can always come back and put the heater box in before POR, but um, I'm way more comfortable trying to put an electric fan on the dash to keep the... Def to keep the um, fog from forming on the inside of the window um, than I am from just um, wasting all my time this week trying to install a heater box. Okay, that has started. God. Okay, I got this other one in too. 
get in there. Oh my God. The subframe is in place, but this bolt here is fighting us. Um, he's throwing a thread chaser on it. I found that our transmission mounts are actually already installed. I just had to find some nuts for them. Engine mount over here, that's all installed. I got the RTV on the sides and I put seam sealer on the top. And we should be able to put those three nuts in and to get that thing uh, mounted. I want to keep these control arms up a little bit. They're kind of out in weird, weird nowhere land. So we're going to throw uh, the shocks in just as limiters here. Yeah, I guess that's, that's it. I, I'm not, um, not having a great night. All right, guys, it's time. I'm going to jack the car up. We're going to try to slide this whole drivetrain in here and get it uh, mounted up. Thing needs to come down like bottom basement here so we can get it under there. One more. Oh no. Gotta go down way further. I think we're going to end up getting the engine hoist in here and lifting the car up with that. It's the only way we're going to get the car high enough to slide this engine back under with the nice little cart we have it on. Oh, I got to get the engine turned straight, but I don't know how I'm going to do that. Well, you got room on the front not right here so I need to lift this up again we got to get that engine mount up to that mount so the bracket up to the mount I just we can't push it in back any further we should be able to let the car down onto that jack stand get another one over there get the engine hoist disconnected from the car and then be able to hook the hoist up to the engine and then pull the engine up to latch in there Didn't quite get it done last night, but we got to a place that I think I can take over by myself. So I'm going to re-rig the engine hoist onto the rear cover of the engine. Hopefully get that rear engine mount at least started. And then we can work on the front end with maybe a floor jack. I think it's going to work okay. By the way, this would be so much easier with an actual lift. I had you guys pointed in the wrong direction, I'm sorry. Uh, we got the mount uh, mounted up here. It is bolted in. The way you set alignment toe with these is to put shims in the front of the transmission and that'll push the whole drivetrain forward or back a little bit and the rear engine mount bracket is slotted slightly to allow for this. And I think that I'm running into some of that issue. So raising the engine up into the chassis didn't really work out for me so I set the engine down on blocks. That was a bit of a struggle. And then I decided to lower the body down on it. Works a little bit better but now the front cross member is not lining up with the uh, transmission mount uh, studs. So I think I have to add a shim kit in that front end of the, the transmission. And I know I bought one from Clark's like a year ago. I do not need to be wasting the whole day trying to find stuff in piles. I mean, I don't have that many piles left. Let's, let's just be honest. Most of the stuff is, is installed now. So I don't know where it is. Should have got up and used the press. We're going in. Tip I learned on these is always have a tool on top of them somehow because of that. Even better yet if you can have something inside it.
Puppy's good to go. Don't do this. Don't do this. You're gonna have to take it out to put it through the control arm. Now I gotta pound these stupid things back out. I wanna go and do something else tonight. Figured I'd go look through my Clark's Ultimate Fuel Tank uh, installation kit. This comes with a new fuel tank, so let's pull that out first. Made in Canada. <laughs> cool. That's great. Don't have to do my KBS kit um, that I did on the Sonnet. That was a... I mean, it works, but it's a kind of a pain in the butt if you don't have to do it. Um, here's a ticket. This is the stainless fuel um, level sender. They give you stainless uh, hooks. The uh, fuel tank strap is not stainless. And then there's all the little rubber stuff and the hose clamps and all that crap that you need. And it saves a lot of time getting the ultimate kit instead of um, screwing around going to auto parts store to auto parts store trying to find the exact right size of, of whatever. I think it's time to drop the old fuel tank out. <laughs> I know it smells like varnish. We'll see how bad it is rust wise. It's full of crap. Definitely good to replace it. Time to put together our Clark's Ultimate Fuel Tank Kit. We're gonna throw our little sender in. And they do say you're supposed to test your sender before you throw it in, but uh, fortunately for me, I don't have an electrical system in my car yet, so I don't think that's gonna be a good idea. Uh, let's just put this together. <clears throat> when I fill it with fuel, I'll, I'll know it's full of fuel and we can always carry an extra gallon if I need to. We have a lock ring. Stick it in, turn it. Looks pretty good to me. We'll take our wax or oil off this thing and get ready to put on the anti squeak strips, which are Kind of like little cork looking guys. Is the adhesive gone? <laughs> That's just headliner uh, adhesive that I used. Finding this stuff at auto parts stores can be kind of a struggle, so it's good to have something that you could just put in your cart and take home. We gotta clean out the inside of this steel filler neck, and I wasn't really sure how to do it. Maybe a pipe cleaner or something. I'm just gonna try a rust remover and see how it goes. Oh, it's leaking bad. Clearly that didn't work, so I just filled up a cheese ball bucket barrel uh, with the rust remover. We'll just have to flip it over halfway through. I'm gonna go over on the other side of the car, and I'm gonna start cleaning up in here where I did my fender repair, because I never actually painted that. So that's gotta get painted before I drive this thing. I'm at a pretty good stopping point for about three of my sub projects here, so we're gonna start a, a fourth uh, sub project. Let me show you the problem. To get wheels that fit tires that I can actually buy, I had to get 14 inch wheels from a Datsun 240Z S30. I think it fits the S130 as well. And that means that I got my correct bolt pattern. The uh, inner kind of center bore is wrong, but the stud is about flush with the face of the wheel. So we have to get a longer stud in there. Let me show you what I got cooking. I popped the stock studs out of my axle flange here and just with a hammer, just hammered them out. And I found that I can get longer 7 16 20 studs. 
but the, the neural diameter on this is 0.472 inches. The neural diameter on this, I think, is like 0.8 or something. It's a slightly bigger, but it's, it's not ridiculously huge. So what I've been doing is chucking them in the drill, and then I take my <laughs> Dremel and I can actually sand that down or, or grind that down a little bit on the neural. Once I get that done, I can uh, measure it, make sure it's um, at 0.472, and then I get my modified studs that I can throw on. Hi. I'll come up and be with you soon enough. One. So the new studs are a common Dorman number. I can get them pretty much anywhere. And I decided I'd start with eight, do my modification, put them on my axles, and then test fit the wheels before I go and waste all my time doing um, all 16 of them. Um, so this is all undercoated too. So that's looking pretty good. There's my patch. All right. I'm pretty sure there are brake lines up in the fuel tank cavities, so I think we should go get those first. First of all, we've got this very long brake line that goes to the back, and it's not supposed to be here. If we look very closely up through the hole, you can see the brake line there. So that actually goes up through the, uh, the passenger compartment here. And we got a piece of brake line here that goes in from the, looks like from the passenger compartment, two of them. They hook into, I think, a T in there. They come out to the sides. Let's get that grommet out of here and we'll move up to the master. Here we have a single pod master cylinder for single circuit brakes. This is uh, pre-late 60s. They use these on um, pretty much everything. So the deal is if you lose any uh, seal in the master cylinder, the whole car loses all the hydraulic brake pressure. So I don't want to keep this thing in here very long, but I'm going to get a new one just so I can get this thing on the road and we can put a dual master cylinder in later. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead. We'll pull this thing off. Looks like there are a couple drips of fluid in there, but <laughs> almost nothing. Don't know if you can see this, but there is a QR code on the top of this master cylinder cap. It tells me that someone has replaced this in the recent future, in the recent past. I think it was the guy I bought it from. Pretty rusty in there for being new. You gotta paint these things when you buy them. They don't, they don't paint them. I don't know why. It's the most frustrating thing. Hey, right, so it's been a little while since I looked this thing over. I thought it, I thought the master was bad. Let's take a look. I don't know why. Maybe it's because that it had no brakes, and I just assumed that every, everything is bad. But yeah, this definitely still works, and it sounds very healthy. Stainless lines are pretty silly. They are much harder and more difficult to bend than normal uh, mild steel lines, and they're harder to bend, way harder to bend than uh, NICOP, nickel copper lines that I've used before. Um, so if you use a channel lock to line up the end and get it started, uh, a turn or two, you're going to be a lot better off than just trying to struggle because I know it's can be really difficult to sit there and, and think you're getting it started and then it's not started. So just take Take it easy, get your uh, light grip on a vice grip or a channel lock and, and get that thing started with one hand. You'll, you'll be a lot happier in the long run. Yeah, we're gonna cut that. Oh yeah. Awesome. You know, I found one last jack stand laying around. So with the, the tires and the jack kind of playing back up here, I was able to get both wheels off. we got time for one more thing this morning before I go to work. Let's try to get this drum off. Attention. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma. Reese's junk. Well, this stuff looks like kind of honey almost, like thicker honey. The shoes actually have a lot of thickness. So I could probably use them, but they're probably asbestos, and I don't want to have them in here. All the springs look pretty good. Nothing's super rusty, and I should be able to reuse any springs if I don't have any in the kit. The wheel cylinder, I am not even going to try. I'm just going to take it out, chuck it. The drums don't look too bad on the outside. 
On the inside, the braking surface is what my boss would call the surface of the moon. So I'm going to bring this to work, probably learn how to use the brake lathe. I don't, I don't work in the shop, I'm up front. <laughs> so I got to learn all these tools. I actually had been hoarding some drums from my parts cars just in case I needed extras, but I see now that Clark's now has new drums for these cars. So I don't have to worry about it if, this, <laughs> if the lathe doesn't work out or there's not enough meat in there. I can always just get new ones and it's, it's kind of no weight off my shoulders. I've got bad news and I've got bad news. The bad news is that I have a rare metallic brake option that uh, no one carries parts for. So I'm going to have to order those online. They'll come at some point. I have some brake um, hoses that are on the way, so I'll get those tomorrow, but what good does it do me without wheel cylinders? But I think today I'm going to end up working on fuel system instead, uh, so we can go get that tank set up in the car. The filler neck came out looking really nice. I still didn't get all that undercoating off, but that's that's okay. I don't really care. It's more about protecting the part than it is about making it look good because it's, it's not going to be visible anyway. You'd think I would have learned my lesson on the way out. Boy, what a fun job. All right, we're gonna go down there. So this has to go on here and all that. All right. Oh my gosh. Fit. The, the filler neck's already up there, so I think I should be able to pull this around and start the nut. All right, that's the way to do it for sure. I can see the hoses up there, but I don't think reaching through here is the best way to get it. Although the way I went through definitely sucked as well. I think the next thing I have to do is push that little uh, brake line grommet in because I forgot to do that before. <laughs> that might, might just stay like that for a while. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I think if I were designing this car, I would probably want to have some kind of access panel here that you could remove and then you could work on the um, hoses straight in there. But that's not how they did it. So. Yeah, I, I understand the reason for a firewall and all that stuff. It just seems like this is a really difficult situation. Before I put the shifter in the floorboard I want to make sure that I have it well lubricated inside so the manual says you're supposed to put an inch and a half pipe in and push it down which is like a spring action pushes down and then you're supposed to turn it and it's not turning for me so I'm gonna to try to get a little bit of uh, help. So there's that detent there right? I think that might just be pieces of uh, grease. Instead of screwing around with the pipe, if I whack it like this, it pushes the ring down and turns it. It says use liver plate. Okay, this has to have these tabs going side to side. I think keeps your shifter from turning. Still wants to hang up. Oh, right there. And what size is that? Three quarter? Yeah. All right, three quarter copper pipe is the solution. And so that will push down the the uh, sphere in there without hitting the retainer. Thanks, Dad. 
I'm picking dust out of my eyes that used to be in the car for 50 years and got the original wiring harness out. It's, uh, well, we'll go up there to show you, but we got the Clarks next to it. Um, that loop is optional. You pay extra for the loop. But at the other end, this is what you unhook under the instrument panel, and it's uh, five on one and six on the other. So uh, they got some little uh, spring, springy retainers under there that are kind of neat to deal with. Clark's does not do a multi-kit on the uh, wiring anymore. I think they probably had too many options that people were getting confused, but they do a price uh, volume discount. So if you buy a lot of them like I did, you get a um, certain percentage off. Are you finding out, did you say that was a backup switch here? Oh yeah, that's the stuff that you wouldn't know that you had if you didn't remove the wiring harness. We also got a couple more pieces of wiring over here, little mini, uh, there's a headlight bucket extension, stuff like that, so they have little instructions for you and the, ins the assembly manual will help as well. We were nearing the end of the getter running phase, and so I went up and organized the barn and found a bunch of Corvair parts. We want to go through these see what's bad, see what's good, and see what we still have to install. First of all, we have a tune-up kit from when I worked at Napa. I picked everything up ahead of time. The filter, by the way, if you walk into Napa, it's $28.99. If you buy 12 at Clark's, it's like $11.05. It's, holy crap, buy the Clark's filter. Uh, we have some oil here, a vacuum crossover pipe, the generator, let's hear that. We have the idler pulley. That thing's dry. Two carburetors, throttle crossover, and I think two fuel lines here. So I think we'll have to reuse the fuel lines. They look fine. It's not too much, but it's enough to keep me busy. We've been working on little stuff. Been putting the new harness in. I had forgotten to put the main harness up over the transmission. So dad fished that through, went through the phone here, and then I ran it up the inside here there's a couple clips up there that goes into and then it talks to these little uh, connectors up there we got the uh, positive wire up to the center we got the negative um it's coming through here and we're gonna run this probably up into the cabin uh, i got the the grommet in there so things don't rub on each other and the harness is going all the way through this is for a reverse switch i guess we were able to find enough kind of used uh, light housings that we have two of these backup ones and they have the socket coming out of the bottom But I need to go and buy two of the ones on the outside that have the little uh, Comes out the middle. They're kind of expensive, but I'm happy they're available because they're all rotten all the time Everything's starting to come together here. This goes to the lights. We got a um, Couple clips to buy here and put these up the battery. I had a 51 in here. We want a 51 R and the R is reversed polarity, so the hot, the positive goes to the starter and the negative goes down to this post and then I think to this thing. So it's mostly just kind of boring, random, little kind of assembly stuff today. I'm gonna try to put that shift rod in and show you how that goes. Oh, also, I found my <clears throat> missing yokes while my dad found them. It was in the same box as everything else and I just didn't see them, so <laughs> isn't that how it goes? Uh, I'm going to continue on. I will bring you along with me. I decided that I would try to put the speedometer cable in. Can't quite reach this thing, so I think I'm going to have to have the channel locks in here to do it the whole time. I apologize if I seem breathy right now. My face is two inches from the microphone. So this is the old grommet uh, that goes on the footwell down here and this is our new Clark speedometer cable and I'm thinking that I need to push this through here yeah I don't think that's a good idea is it <laughs> not to get a new one of these but in the meantime in the interest of getting this car on the road I'm going to put this up here with 102 horsepower you never know I don't want to be accidentally doing 120 miles an hour here headlight harness going in huh so what's the deal with the headlight harness? How does the how does the experience treat you? Very well, actually. So where does this thing connect? Oh, just a plug on the body, and that must go through to the fuse box. Probably to the switch. Oh, it's yeah. also got the horn in the harness too. Might be needing that. You never know. 
You're telling me this puppy might even have headlights? Maybe. For the first time in my ownership, we're gonna have four seal beams up there, huh? For the seal beam rally team? For seal the seal beam, beam rally team's gotta have yeah. them. So there's a bracket that goes in the back that bolts into the, through the car into this. Let's go there. This long one. Ooh, I think we have a winner. There you go. Whoa! When my dad went and painted this shifter shaft for me, he was nice enough to measure where this weird little foam thing goes. It goes 38 and a quarter inches from this end, from the rear end, all the way forward. So we are going to set it there. I got some headliner adhesive that I stole from him, so we're going to use that and uh, stick it on there. I don't know what this does. If you have funny comments about what you think it does, let me know. Um, yeah, I think it's so when mechanics have the long pan off and they're walking around under the hoist that they don't bonk their head on it. What do you think? Nice and tacky. Let's throw it on. Tacky, just like my humor. Uh, that was a joke within a joke. Now for good luck, I'm going to put a seal beam sticker on here. But i got to put it on the bottom side so I see it when I'm working under the car. Just as a reminder, we are giving away chrome Corvair stickers that commemorate this car and my quest to take it to press on regard this rally. So if you want one of these, go to the, go to the website sealbeamrally.team and you can buy any other sticker and I'll give you one of these for free. And if you ask really nicely, I'll probably give you one too. <laughs> <laughs> See you at team at Gmail. Dad's putting together the headlight buckets here. And we noticed that these have a little stamp up here. It says R1, R2, L1, L2. So I took those. I was able to just make them out and I wrote them on the buckets so it's easier to remember. And then Clark's replacement um, headlight adjusters come with little uh, bolts and nuts instead of the original rivets. A lot easier than trying to find a, a rivet gun that'll fit it. We have little back backing uh, rubber deals for the turn signals and the turn signal bulb goes in here with a socket. Manual is kind of hard to read but this spring here actually twists in like a screw and then you take that hook and you hook it around that hole in your bezel. They call that the retaining ring and yeah they don't actually show how it comes out because you're just supposed to know that. What are you gapping that to, 35 thou? Sure. If you don't have the right gap, the headlights don't illuminate properly. All right, well, he's gonna struggle on that some more and I'm going to work on my shifter finally. After looking at the car for approximately three seconds, it became extremely obvious that the shifter rod connects to the uh, bolt studs on the uh, bottom of the shifter. So I need to find these nuts that I took off of here when I painted it in the, <laughs> in, in the garage full of crap everywhere. That's become a real challenge. I may have to go and just buy some new ones. Oh, there must be, oh you know what? No, there's um, these clips. I guess I gotta pop rivet those on. Well, I think we're both losing a little steam tonight. Not sure what else I'm going to get done, but it's it's going okay. We got a lot of little details uh, buttoned up here. I'm going to try to put in, I think there's a little uh, pulley thing under tunnel. So this is, the, this is the little pulley that goes through in front of the shifter under the car. Um, the pulley that went up on the top of the footwell actually kind of interfered with where the brake line was routed. And... I had some trouble with that brake line. The other ones fit really well, but that one, um, I kind of had to bend the brake line out of the way. So pretty unremarkable, but when I put that pulley thing up there, the brake line was kind of in the way. I just bent it out of the way, put the thing in, and it's fine. So we're just going to run with it. Look at that. Just as I'm starting to doubt my decision to buy new pulleys, I look at this thing, this clutch pulley, and it is just crusty inside. It is not grease 
it's some kind of just really hard gunk. So I am glad I bought a new one from Clark's. Put that in. I got the shaft greased up. We'll throw that bolt through. It is really, really hard to mess this bolt up. There's only one way you can put it in. And if you managed to mess that up, you must have been trying really hard. So I know you can do it. It's under by the shifter. You know what I'm talking about. The second one always goes faster than the first. So these clips hold the uh, headlight bezel on. They were taken off for painting, and so we kind of pop riveted it on from the back. And it worked much better without the headlights in place. It's right there. So you pop riveted came from the back and then that allows it to be flatter for the seal around it to set to sit there. Yeah, that was only a factor on the bottom too. The seal is above these two, so it didn't really matter on those. But it was easier to put it in from the back because of this ridge. So I'm gonna take a nap and I'm hoping by the end of the week, hoping I will have, I know I won't have a shifter because my shifter, um, I'm gonna have to order more parts for that. But I will hopefully have a firm brake pedal and I should have uh, wheels, all the wheels put on. So I think at that point it's going to be a roller and we can start maybe setting up the engine. I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Do you ever think about how that looks just like a Hino Contessa PD? A friend of mine sent me a Craigslist link to one in San Francisco. That'd be a sweet car to have too. Don't be like me. Don't be an idiot. Don't forget to put your brake backing plate on before you put your yoke on the stupid axle. Now I bought a puller from Clark's, but I can't go forward with this anymore because I have no way of getting that off. Then by the end of the week, hopefully have a firm brake pedal. I did put grease on the end of this because when I pulled these out they were rusted together and it was the worst thing in the world. Don't tell the cops but this is how I'm doing it. To celebrate getting my first axle in, I am going to use a new toy I got. It's called a lock and lube. It is a locking grease fitting. And hopefully it will work better for my rusty crap that I like to work on. Hmm. It's actually too tight back there to fit this thing. I think it barely fits a normal grease attachment. I guess it works. Well, I received no compensation from lock and lube. I just thought it'd be a a fun product to try so there you go I think it uh, I think it works an inspection the other day I noticed that the holes on the end here are very wallowed out I know that those slots will make the shifting really sloppy and I want nice crisp shifting so I decided to get a new one of these from Clark's This shaft kind of slides on the on the bracket there. And we got our little cup that goes into the shifter. That actually bolts on. <laughs> Woohoo! Otherwise we've got a shifter shaft here that needs to be held up for the night. Give me all your money. <laughs> Great news. I had the wheel cylinder push rod things. There's a guy here in the Twin Cities who was willing to sell me a couple and he wanted five bucks for them. I gave him ten. Nice guy. He also stuffed a Corvair drivetrain into a Fiat 850 Spider, which is funny. But I find it's very entertaining that people who have Corvairs 
uh, tend to also know about Saab Sonnets and people who have Saab Sonnets also tend to know about Corvairs and like all the weird cars that I'm into tend to be the, the weird cars that everyone is into. <laughs> anyway, um, I have no idea what I'm putting together on this back axle so I'm going to try to figure it out and then I'll show you after, <laughs> after I get it done because it's going to be a lot of trial and error here. This is not going well and I blame the friendly local parts store that I used to work at because they don't give you a complete kit of springs or anything to, to do these brakes. Since I'm at a time limit, I, I think I just have to go out in Clark's and just order uh, some fast shipping on this because I'm up against a wall. I need to get this done. I don't have time to wait around. I don't have time to go and, and piece things together or go try to find my old parts or whatever it is. I just need my stuff and I need it right now. And I need correct parts, not wrong stuff from Napa. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, that looks beautiful. I like that. And this is the bad bezel. This is the one that's more messed up. It looks okay. This one's the better one. This one was a, a new stock replacement collision part, I think. I'm gonna put the mustache on. Clark Gable mustache. At some point. Let's let's see it on your face. The new mustache. Do a Clark Gable quote. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know any either. <laughs> I think that's the way. What do you think about the car so far? It's coming together. I wish the engine was closer to running. 